it says, children, who's that? That's you guys. Okay. <laughs> children, obey your parents in everything. How many things? Some things? No. A few things? No. How many things? What things? Everything. Now, this is even crazier. I mean, that's crazy enough. This is even crazier. For this pleases the Lord. It actually says here, God says, you know what makes me really, really happy? It's when you obey your mom and your dad. Not just when you feel like it. Not just when it's easy, but in everything. Now, what does obey mean? Anybody know what is that word obey? That's a pretty important word. What does it mean to obey? Parker. To listen. To listen. Okay. Anybody else have anything to add? Yes, Matthias. Listen to your parents. Okay. And not just listen to them, but also to do what? Yeah. Pardon? Right That's right. To do the right thing that they tell you to do. That's exactly right. So it's to listen to your mom and dad, but not just listen. Also do the thing that they want you to do. Now, I'm going to tell you a story. Um, when I was a boy, um, we gave knives, not just high school grads. <laughs> We gave knives when you were like eight. You got a knife, right? And so I had a jackknife. It was like a pocket knife, you know, a knife that kind of folds up. And I loved it. And I used to take wood and I used to whittle wood with it. And whittle is a word that means you take a big piece of wood and you make it smaller. That's what whittling does. It's what we used to do before we had iPads. We would whittle stuff with knives and woods. And one day, my dad, for whatever reason, he took my knife away from me. I must have been being bad. And as he was looking at my knife, he put his thumb on the blade, and he says, the blade has gotten really dull. It wasn't sharp anymore. I had done so much whittling that the blade had gotten dull. And he said, it was so dull that it was dangerous. I'm like, what? That doesn't make any sense. It's like, this blade is so dull that you'll cut yourself with it. I'm like, that sounds like crazy talk. So my dad took the knife away and says, you're not allowed to use your knife, no more whittling until I sharpen your knife. Well, that's when I knew my dad was totally losing his marbles because that didn't make any sense, right? A dull knife is more dangerous than a sharp knife? That doesn't make sense. So anyway, my dad went to work. I was playing in the backyard and I was bored and I wanted to whittle something like the you know, kitchen chair leg or something like that. And so I went into my dad's shop, and there on his bench was my knife. But I remember my dad said, don't touch that knife until I sharpen it. So what do you think I did? You think I obeyed my dad, or I disobeyed my dad? What do you think? Disobeyed. Disobeyed. Dis oh, great. Thanks. <laughs> my kids disobeyed. You think I disobeyed. Either you know me well, or maybe you understand the gospel. Maybe that's what it is. We'll, we'll go with the latter. You're right. I disobeyed my dad. I thought, I'll use this knife, and I can put it back before my dad gets home from work, and he'll never know. So I went and got a whittling stick, and I started to try to whittle, but the knife was so dull, it was really, really hard, to, and I'm pushing and pushing, and the knife slipped, and guess what happened? I whittled a big chunk out of my finger, and my blood started pouring down my hand, and I'm crying, and there's blood all over the knife, and I drop it, and I run in the house, and I'm crying, and my mom said, what happened? So I whittled my finger, and she said, your dad said not to use your knife. And I said, I know. And so she had to take me down to the hospital. I had to get a needle and I had to get stitches. And I still have a scar right there on my finger that every time I look at my finger, it reminds me that I disobeyed my dad. That I actually thought I was smarter than what my dad was. You see, my dad told me not to use a dull knife because he's actually a lot smarter than me. And because he loves me, he didn't want me to get hurt. Now, God tells us to obey our moms and our dads because he loves us and he knows that we need mom and dads to protect us. Because kids, you guys like playing with stuff that can hurt you, right? That's why in the electrical sockets in your house, you probably have these little white plugs that go in there because when your dad was little, he probably put a fork in there or something like that. Don't do that, it's a really bad idea and bad things happen. But you guys like to play with stuff that can hurt you. And so moms and dads are given by God to protect you. Because kids, we're curious little critters and we're always wanting to explore. And sometimes that leads to trouble. And so you know what God actually says? Look, look what he says to a bunch of kids years and years ago. He said this. Oh, hold on. It'll wait. Just okay, Ryan. I'll, I'll do it later. Um... 
That's the way God has actually designed it. God has designed it that when you start out in life, you don't know a whole lot, do you? And as you get older, you learn more and more stuff. Like when you were born, did you know how to talk? No. Didn't you know, did you know how to walk? No. Okay, walking's pretty easy now, right? But when you were little, you didn't even know how to walk. Right? You had to learn that. And so as you're getting older, and you're going into school, and you're going to start kindergarten, and you're going to the next grade, you are constantly learning more and more. And so God gives us parents who know more than we do to protect us, to look out for us, so they can teach you and guide you and care for you. And God does this because he loves you. So he gives you a mom and dad to look after you. He says, now I want you to listen to them. Lily, I want you to listen and obey dad and not talk to Atlee until I'm done at the end of the message. Can you do that? Awesome, thanks. Um, now, listen, kids at different ages, they come to a point where you think, actually, I probably know more than my parents do. Right, that happens, it happened to me, it'll happen even at some age. One of my kids was born, came out of the womb and was already ready to debate. Like that, so it happens. Sometimes it's younger, sometimes it happens older, but listen, you don't know more than your moms and your dads. That's why we have to listen to them. In fact, think of every other animal in the whole world. Think of an animal in your head. And think of the little baby animal, the little kid animal, whatever animal you're thinking of. Like, for example, what would happen to them if they didn't listen to their moms and dads? Think about a deer. And the mommy deer says, listen, Junior, we don't ever cross the highway when we see lights coming. You need to listen to this, you need to remember this. You never cross the highway when you see lights coming. And Junior's like, that's stupid. Right, this isn't very far, it's two hops, and man, I'm fast. What happens to Junior if he doesn't listen to his mom and dad? Right? He's squashed by a car, and you see him on the side of the highway, and your parents say, look away, look away, because he's all yucky, right? That's what happens. What happens to little Zoe Zebra when her dad teaches her this is how far we stay away from lions. This is when we run from lions. This is how we run from lions. We've had thousands of years to teach us of lions eating zebras, so this is what we've learned. So listen to me and obey. And little, little Zoe Zebra says, nah, I'm faster than any lion. What happens to Zoe? What happens to her? She's eaten by the lions, that's right. That's exactly what happens. It goes bad for little Zoe if she doesn't listen to her mom or dad. What would happen to the little fish if he doesn't listen to his parents and he swims out past the reef? He gets a movie called Finding Nemo, right? That's what happens to him. Okay, that's a bad example. But you know in the movie, who's seen the movie Finding Nemo? You know that everything bad that happens in the movie happens because Nemo doesn't listen to his dad. And he swims out past the reef. Because God loves us, he gives us parents who work on God's behalf to look after you. In fact, God wrote to children years and years ago and he said these words. Right there. It says, honor your father and mother. And one of the ways that you honor your father and mother, you listen to them and you do what they say. Honor your father and mother as the Lord your God has commanded you. Then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God has given to you. In fact, to try to help you understand what that's going to say, we're going to let Veggie Tales sing a song for us. Okay? All right? So look up here. Here comes Veggie Tales. You get the click it once it started running. So the ducklings listened closely. Gelato taught them everything they needed to know. Look at little Liliana as her mother shows her how to gather breakfast from a chicken or make milkshakes from a cow. Even Stephen's struggling papa taught him when to take a bow. Nothing's missing cause they listen when their parents taught them how. A mother and a father know the ways to live life right. So listen little children and your days will turn out bright. Now you! Perfect! Now, barbershop! 
things and your life will turn out right. So my question is, if we know that our moms and dads love us, and we know that when they ask us to do things, it's the good thing for us and it's the most important, why is it so hard for us to obey sometimes? Well, the Bible says it's because of this word called sin. And a sin is why your parents have to work really, really hard to teach you to be obedient and why they don't have to work at all to teach you to be disobedient. Right? You can think of new ways every day to be disobedient. Nobody has to teach you that. It just comes so easy. That's because of sin. Sin is the bad things we do, but even more than that, sin is the things that we should do, but we don't. In fact, maybe you can say it like this. Sin is basically doing what I want to do when I want to do it rather than what God wants. So, in a way, sin is kind of like acting like God. You see that? It's kind of like saying, I'm just as important or good as God. I'm just as smart as He is. So, I, I want you to put on your little thinking caps. And so to help you put on your thinking cap, I'm going to need two volunteers. I need two volunteers. Okay, Matthew. Matthew, you're going to be God. I need you to hop up here and you're going to stand up here because you're, you're bigger than everybody and you rule and you see way more than everybody does and you're way smarter than everybody is, so you're God, just for the play. Okay? <laughs> and I need another volunteer who's going to be like people. Sarah, come on over here. So God is the one who is above us. He's the one who makes the rules. He's the one who knows everything. He's smarter than all of us combined in this room. He's smarter than all the moms and dads in the whole world all put together. And humans, we're below God, and we're supposed to follow his rules. So God says, what does God say to us? Can you read that out, Matthew? Children, obey your parents, yes, for, this for this pleases the Lord. That's what God says. The one who is so smart, that's what he says to kids. But imagine, I know it's hard for you to imagine, but really, try really hard to imagine this. Imagine that you get into a situation where you don't want to obey your mom and dad, right? <laughs> try to imagine that, right? Think of like 20 minutes ago. Just kind of think of that. That'll probably help you. So imagine, imagine that, that your, your parents say, I want you to pick up your toys. I want you to do your homework after school. I want you to clean your rooms. And sometimes we don't like doing the things that our parents want us to do, do we? So let's say your parents say, I want you to go to your room and clean it. And you go in your room and you close the door and you say, nah, I'm going to play Lego instead. I'll clean up my room when I feel like it. You just decided, Sarah, if you do that, you just decided that you don't like God's rules. And you just made up your own rule. And guess what your rule is? God's rule is obey your parents in everything. And your rule is... I'll obey them when I feel like it. So you created your own rule, which is kind of like, come here, hop up here. It's kind of like you've decided, I am just as equal with God. I will decide what's going to happen in my own life. <laughs> All right. And you're just like your dad. You can go, oh, man. And I do the same thing all the time. But Sarah, how do you think God feels about that? Right, I think it probably makes him sad. It shows him that we don't trust him. It shows him that we don't listen to him. In fact, Jesus even says, it actually shows him that we don't love him. Because we don't think that what he is saying is the best, and we don't think that he wants the best for us. That's called sin, and it happens to all people. Little people struggle with it, big mommies and daddies struggle with it too. <coughs> Now, in the movie Finding Nemo, you guys can hop down and you guys can go have a seat back down in your chair. In the movie Finding Nemo, Nemo doesn't listen to his dad, does he? He doesn't think his dad knows what he's talking about. And so Nemo knows better and he swims out past the safety of the reef and he gets caught by that diver. Remember, he gets caught by the diver and the diver goes and takes him back to Sydney, Australia and he gets put in a fish tank where he has to wait for Darla. Right, the freaky little kid who destroys fish. She's going to come, right? So all this bad stuff happens to Nemo. All the consequences are because he doesn't listen, because of the sin in Nemo. And then you know what happens? The worst thing is, is that Nemo is separated, really. Nemo is separated from his dad. 
And the Bible says that's what happens. Sin actually separates us from God. Just like Nemo and his dad were split apart, that's what sin does to us. It separates us from God. And Nemo realizes quickly that what he did was wrong and he's desperate to try to get back to his dad. But everything he does, it fails. He can't get back to his dad on his own. And that's sad, isn't it? But guess what? That's not the whole story. What Nemo doesn't know, what Nemo doesn't see is that his father will do anything, face anything, suffer anything to rescue Nemo. That's how much he loves him. So all those bad things that happen to Nemo's dad happen because Nemo's dad loves Nemo so much. And what are some of the bad things that happen to Nemo's dad in the movie? Anybody remember? Rachel? He gets almost eaten by three different sharks. Sarah, what else bad happens? Jellyfish came. He swims through a whole school of poison jellyfish and he gets stung. What else, Jenna? He goes through this waterway with a whole bunch of sea turtles. He goes through the vortex of terror <laughs> called the East Coast Current or something like that with all the turtles. Right, he sees that, he's in the dark, and he sees that freaky fish with the light and the big teeth that chase him everywhere and want to eat him. And he gets swallowed by a what? A whale. All these things, he's battling the whole ocean to try to rescue Nemo. And you know what? You know, the Bible teaches you that your Heavenly Father loves you just as much. And so that our sin, the thing that separates us from God, he wants to battle that. And so he sends Jesus on this adventure where Jesus battles the whole earth and suffers all kinds of things to save us, to get us back. In fact, he dies on the cross. And the Bible says that this was the only way that God could destroy sin without destroying this, our hearts that have so much sin in it. And because of what Jesus did on the cross, we can be forgiven even when we're disobedient to our moms and dads. We can be forgiven. And guess what that word, guess what that's called? That's called the best word you'll ever learn. And it's called grace. Grace means that even when we do bad stuff, that God can forgive us because of what Jesus has done. And it gets even better. When we believe in Jesus, when we decide that we're going to listen to him and follow him and we're going to ask him to be our friend forever, not only does God give us grace and forgive us, but he gives us this new kind of power. So the thing that made sin so easy to say yes to, the thing that made it so easy to disobey our parents and so hard to be obedient, gets switched around. We have this new power that now we can say yes to our moms and dads. And we can be obedient and God is actually going to help us do that. Isn't that amazing? You have power from God who comes in you when you believe in Jesus that you don't have to say yes to sin anymore. God loves you so much that he's given you a mommy and a daddy to care for you, protect you, and teach you about God. And so it's really important that you listen to them and obey them. But sometimes we don't. We think that we know better, which actually means we think we know better than what God knows, and that's called sin. And just like sin separated Nemo from his father, it separates us from God, but God is the good daddy. He's the good daddy. He loves us so much that he sends Jesus on this mission to rescue us. He suffers all kinds of things so that he can bring us back to God and have a new power. Because, you know, at the end of the movie, the movie ends, but they're actually, they're making a Nemo 2 coming out next summer. <laughs> Should be good. Um, and don't quote me on this because I'm not prophetic. But I bet you, when Nemo got back and saw everything that his dad had done and how right his dad was, the next time Nemo's dad said, Nemo, don't go swim out past the reef. What do you think Nemo did? Do you think he listened or do you think he disobeyed? Uh, you think he disobeyed? That's probably why there's a fine Nemo too. You're probably right. Um, I hope he listened. I hope he was so impressed with how much his dad loved him that he listened. We're going to pray for you guys and then we're going to sing a song about this grace, okay? All right, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that you love us so much. Thank you that you give us moms and dads that you want to be obeying you and listening to you so that when we obey our moms and dads, we're actually obeying what you want. Thank you for our moms and our dads. Thank you uh, for the love that they have for us. Help us to listen to them and obey. God, we tell you that we don't always do that. 
As kids, we don't always listen to our moms and dads. As moms and dads, we don't always listen to you. We think that we know better. We think that we're smarter. And so we ask that you would forgive us for our disobedience. Thank you that you can do that because of what Jesus has done. Thank you that you can give us grace to forgive our sin, but you also give us power so that we can say yes to you, Jesus, and no to the things that would have us be disobedient. I pray for every little heart here and every little mind, and I, I, I pray, God, that, that their moms and dads wouldn't, wouldn't give them weak truths, but give them big truths from the gospel and let them grow into them. I pray that you would help us not take your scripture and moralize it to children, but take your scripture and show them the gospel, that we're not, we're not kids who are supposed to behave good. We're, we're all broken people who need grace, and only Jesus can make us good. Help us as moms and dads teach this to our children. May you transform them through the understanding of who you are and what you've done, your good news, your gospel. In Jesus' name, and all God's children said, Amen. Amen.